Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to carve the stencil of the month for September of 2023. And I'm going to do something a little bit out of my comfort zone. I needed some help from Ryan on this one. You guys hit that subscribe button and that like button. Click the little bell icon because we got some great stuff coming out that you guys definitely are going to want to see. All right, guys, so the stencil of the month for September of 2023 is this, and it's one of those two-piece deals. This can either be used in there as part of the sign that we're going to do, or it can be used separately, so it's kind of a double value. In case you guys don't know, this is the stencil of the month that all the executive members will get free. Uh, it will be on the website if you're not an executive member, so you can purchase it. In case you don't know what the memberships are about, we have premium memberships and executive memberships. We'll leave a link in the description description below because there's a lot of great benefits. Anyway, let's get going. If you don't have bench cookies in your shop, you should probably get some. They're a really useful little tool. We use them when we have to clamp stencils or templates down because maybe the board has a warp to it. So this stencil is a little bit different than we normally do. Because the Statue of Liberty has detail in there, we put the stencil together and then we spray the whole thing. Now, once that's sprayed, we're gonna remove the large part of it and then clamp the Statue of Liberty right back where she was before and then spray it again to make sure we get our outside line because this is gonna be an outside template. You just wanna make sure to cover up your other artwork with it so you don't overspray and then you lose your lines. We started off with a carving liner at an eighth of an inch deep. Now, again, this is the best possible bit that you can use for fine detail work like this. These lines are all pretty simple, but once it gets to the crown, some of those points get real close together, especially the one by the arm. So you really want to make sure that you take your time and you get that fine point. But again, that's what the carving liner is made for. Once we got all the fine detail work done, then we put the profile bit in at 3 16 of an inch deep. Now we went pretty shallow the first time, 3 16 instead of a quarter inch, just to make sure we get a good solid line around the outside. If you have issues getting the straight lines, it's always better to start a little bit shallow and then come back and go deeper the next time. The less wood you take out, the less resistance, the easier it is to control. Once the outline was done, then we dropped the same profile bit down to a quarter of an inch deep, and that'll give us a nice fat outline around the Statue of Liberty. Normally we'll do this with a 60 degree bit or a 90 degree bit to give a really fat line, but we didn't really have room for that with the lettering being so close, so this did the trick. Then we switch to the 60 degree bit at 3 16 of an inch deep. Now, this font is actually perfect for the 60 degree bit because dad was able to do most of this with one pass. He went back and fixed a couple lines here and there, but for the most part, this went really fast. That 60 degree bit is probably the best cutting bit we have simply because it has three flutes and it flew through this stuff with no problem at all. One thing to remember when doing certain letters, especially like this Y here, you want to continue the line all the way through. You don't want to stop where the lines intersect and then have to cut that little part out after both lines are done. It just gives it a cleaner look.
Now this is where dad had some issues. He's not a rustic guy, but we decided to try the wire wheel on the grinder and give it a beat up look. And I gotta say, I'm pretty proud of dad. He did a really nice job on this. Of course, you can't ask too much of the guy. He still has to do his chamfer on the back. Then we used a fine grit sanding sponge to really get all kind of the nasty burrs and stuff off of this, and it worked great. Now, because we're gonna leave a lot of the spray on this sign, Dad actually sprayed the entire sign because we wanted to have a weathered rustic look. But if you plan on sanding everything off except your carving, you don't need to spray the whole thing like that. You want to take it nice and light. Once that was done, Dad used the 80 grit disc on the disc sander and he got maybe 50 or 60 percent of the black off. Then he used that same fine sanding sponge just to give it a smooth finish. Then we put our spray on it and man, I love the way this thing looks. And actually, believe it or not, Dad does too. So guys, you know that this isn't really my uh, kind of forte. This is more rustic, more kind of in Ryan's category. Honestly, I really like the way this thing came out. It's the first time we've used the wire wheel as far as trying to do a rustic edge. And I think it looks pretty cool. And then we decided to just sand off like half of the of the black on there, which gives it, again, a rustic look. This is a pretty simple carve. It's not super easy, but with the combination of the profile bit, the carving liner, and then the 60 for all the inset letters, it's pretty fast carve. Uh, it was fun. I think you guys will like it. So that is it for today, you guys. If you have any questions on this, please email me directly, eric at Makerwood Sign, or if you want to get a hold of Ryan, it's ryan at Makerwood Sign. Dot com. Again, thank you to all of our premium members and executive members. We couldn't keep doing what we do without the support of you guys. So thanks again so much, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.